What are polar coordinates? Well, it's a different coordinate system, um, quite a bit different from our XY coordinate system. So the XY coordinate system we're used to, and in three dimensions it's X, Y, and Z, because you have a third dimension, uh, is called a rectangular coordinate system. And the polar coordinate system um, measures a point, location of a point in two different ways. And one way is, what is the distance to the point from the origin? And we'll call that R. Think of R as being radius of a circle. And, and also we need an angle. And consistent with what we've been doing, we treat angles as positive in the counterclockwise direction, starting from the positive x-axis. All right, so we can also define this point in terms of the radius or distance from the origin and the angle uh, from the x-axis, or theta. That's polar coordinates. And um, so to describe a point, it takes two pieces of information on a plane where a point is. And uh, so there you are, r and theta. Now then, uh, what, what good is this? <laughs> okay, well, I'll get into that as we, as we move along here, what, uh, how, how valuable polar coordinates are. And then they play a, a, a big factor in our study of complex numbers coming, coming up. All right, but well, first of all, how do you uh, convert to polar coordinates or, or back? Anyway, uh, so if we think of the, um, this is a triangle. And uh, yep, let me get my pen situated here. All right, so we think of this as a right triangle. And this, of course, is x. This is y. And um, we know from Pythagoras that uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. All right, so r squared is x squared plus y squared. And, and normally, we'll take the square root. Now, yeah, in algebra, when you take the square root of an equation, you create two different answers. But we're going to view r as a positive distance. I mean, it actually, it's a bit of an oxymoron because um, in mathematics, distances cannot be negative. And so um, it is possible to interpret r as a negative number. But uh, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll show you that later. Anyway, so you could say that... Uh, R is going to be the positive square root of x squared plus y squared. There we go. Now then, uh, what about the angle? Well, the tangent of theta is y over x. You notice that's, yeah, one more time, that's, that's the slope of this line going through the origin. And so theta is going to be the inverse tangent of y over x but now we have one little complication because you know your calculator is going to give you um, theta to be uh, an inverse tangent to be in quadrant one or quadrant four. And but if you have a point over here in quadrant two and three, then we have to we have to make an adjustment to theta. So we have to be careful of careful of uh, quadrant. Let's make that note here, and we'll see plenty of examples where we have to. Uh, pay attention to this. There you go. So that's um, if I have an x y coordinate, I can uh, I, I'll, I'll write these conversions neatly uh, somewhere else on the board here in a little while. But uh, this would be converting from a rectangular form to a polar form. And um, and I'm going to give you some several examples of these in the next video. This video just introduces the idea of polar coordinates. All right, now, now what if you knew a coordinate in, in r theta form, polar form? How do you get back to uh, x and y? All right, well, um, trigonometry, because the cosine of theta would be x divided by r. So that means that r is, um, yeah, I'm sorry, x is r cosine theta. Uh, let me write it up here. Multiply by r. x is r cosine theta. And similarly, sine is y over r. So y, oh, I feel a sneeze coming. Excuse me, the editing was weird because I took out my sneeze. All right, um, I figured you don't want to see me sneeze. Okay, there we go. And where was I at? 
All right, well, the sine of theta is y over r, so similar idea, y is going to be r sine theta. Now, in this case, you don't have to think about quadrants because cosines and sines will give you the proper positive and negative numbers. All right, so um, there's a start. There's a start. Now, um, polar coordinates, uh, let me talk a little bit more about polar coordinates before we start doing some work with them. And uh, so just we'll, we'll come back to this. I want to um, show you what a polar, a polar plane looks like. And uh, OK, so now I don't know if it's still done. It, when I was in college many years ago, uh, yeah, we didn't have graphing calculators. And um, so graph paper was important. And uh, at least big universities in their bookstores would sell polar graph paper. And uh, so I, uh, you know, when I got out of all that and started teaching in uh, community colleges, I decided to make my own polar graph paper. So it's, uh, it's on my website somewhere. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make a link to it eventually here. OK, anyway, um, polar graphs look like this. There's uh, basically an R axis, okay, except it can be rotated. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw concentric circles. And these, the radii of these circles represents the measurement of R. So one, two, three, four. On this circle, R is equal to three. On this circle, r is equal to 4. And then we can do some angles. There's 45 degrees or pi over 4. This is 0 degrees. This is 90 degrees, 180. And this would be 225, wouldn't it? 270. And then, uh, well, that's what we got for now. Uh, let's do this line. And it's at 135 degrees. So it makes this one, uh, whether it be 315 degrees. And we could go further. We could go 30 degrees. So this is 210. That's 30. And all right, I think you're probably getting the hang of this. Um, but let me, let me just complete it. 60, uh, 240, and let's see, two more, two more. This will be 120 and 300. And this one, it'll be, there we go. It'll be 150 degrees and 330 degrees. There you go. It looks like a dartboard, doesn't it? Polar graph paper looks like this. Uh, and it comes in various sizes and, and configurations. You may have more concentric circles. You may have a lot more angles. Okay, on there. This is a, a rather simple looking one. So that's polar graph paper. And uh, here's a point on polar graph paper. What would this be? This would be uh, 1, 2, 3, comma 120 degrees. All right. How about, um, let's see, what's this point over here? This is 2, comma 225 degrees. There we go. Yep. By the way, um, you could say that uh, here's 45 degree line extends the 225 degree line. You could say that uh, this point is negative 2, 45 degrees. So negative 2 would be going in the opposite direction from 225. Uh, I, I don't like doing that because I think uh, polar coordinates are really meant for R to be positive. But, uh, some textbooks will throw in a few problems where R is negative. And so if R is negative, you have to interpret it as being 180 degrees apart. All right. Um, what would, uh, let's see, what else here? Well, that, that's, that's <laughs> pretty much it. This one's going to be 4, 30 degrees. So there you go. That's how you find them there. Now, you could... Um, and, and I've got graph paper on my website somewhere, my old website, where I've uh, interposed on top of it, or superimposed on top of it, a XY coordinate system. So there we go. It goes something like this. 
and uh, that gets complicated. But uh, so, for example, mm -hmm, there we go. Um, this point right here looks like two comma one and x y coordinates, and two comma one and x y coordinates is. Uh, Actually, that may be correct. Uh, let me see. If this is um, 2, 1. Now, bear in mind that is, those are x, y coordinates. Uh, 2, comma 1 would be, uh, well, what would that be? It would be the square root of 5, I think, and then 30 degrees. So it actually does hit 30 degrees right there, but the length is, is between 2 and 3. All right, so it's getting kind of cluttered, isn't it? But this point is between 2 and 3, and I think you'll find it's the square root of 5 when you work it out. Anyway, um, kind of nice to think of it that way. Uh, so, polar graph paper, and um, finally, what, what would you use that for? <laughs> what, what good is polar graph paper? Well, um, polar graphs or polar coordinates are very useful for things that rotate and um, rotation. So, I'm going to save that for another video. I'm going to give you a few examples of uh, graphs and polar coordinates which uh, are much easier to express in terms of polar form than, they, than it is in rectangular form. So we'll uh, save that for later. Next I'm going to, uh, we're going to do some conversions between polar and rectangular coordinates.